of our series on alternative fuels. Last night, we looked at producing the fuels. Tonight, we explain who is using them now and when you can expect to use them. Way 31's Laura Beth Ezel reports. Alternative fuels are about energy independence, burning cleaner fuels, and more eco-friendly energy sources. But none of these goals can be achieved without those willing to use them. Ethanol and biodiesel. They are two alternative fuel choices that are proven to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, are safer to inhale, and biodegradable. But who is using them? Congress has already mandated that that uh, by 2025 that 36 billion gallons of alternative fuels be be produced. Brazil is already achieving this and considered an energy independent country. 30 years ago they started producing ethanol from sugarcane. Now 90 percent of their cars are flex fuel. Diesel trucks that switch to biodiesel will no longer see that black fume smoke. And any diesel engine can run on biodiesel without making any modifications. But only flex fuel cars can use E85. Some may see the E10 stickers at gas stations now. That is okay for any car, but flex fuel cars can run either E85 or regular gasoline. There are over 110,000 flex fuel vehicles in Alabama. But there are only a handful of stations where these cars can fill up. The city of Hoover, however, decided not to wait on the government to support alternative fuels or a local gas station to install an ethanol biodiesel pump. Hoover did it themselves. We went out on the limb and we did it. And now we've proved it is a viable, the, the biodiesel is a viable program, the ethanol is a viable fuel. We've got millions of miles to track it by. So we're now becoming the point of reference for everyone. Four years ago, the city started collecting used cooking oil from restaurants and residents. The city of Florence just started the same thing this year. Hoover built their own biodiesel processor and invested in all flex fuel vehicles. We're going to store up to 500 gallons of used cooking oil at a time. It's cooking oil that you were cooking with one day and two days later using it as fuel in your car. For every gallon that we reprocess of cooking oil is a gallon that we don't have to buy from Venezuela or Saudi Arabia or some other country that doesn't like us. Hoover also installed Alabama's first E85 and biodiesel pumps behind their shop. 85% of their 400 car fleet run off E85 or their own homemade biodiesel. So we're only using 15% foreign oil at this time, and it's our goal to use 0% foreign oil. Several gas station owners are now installing E85 and biodiesel pumps like Hoover's. Birmingham gas station manager Rick Patel decided to invest in a pump eight months ago. Way 31 was there when Patel dropped ethanol's price per gallon. Ethanol was around 40 cents cheaper than regular gasoline. The people, first of all, when they see the cheap price uh, versus the regular gas, they want to know, can I put this in my car? Now more are following Patel's lead. This month, the first biofuels corridor opened in the U.S. On Interstate 65, from Mobile, Alabama to Gary, Indiana, there will be an alternative fuel pump available without getting below a quarter of a tank. One of those pumps will be in Athens on Highway 72. The Alabama Clean Fuels Coalition says this corridor is just the beginning. More research is being done, more production facilities are being built, and more gas stations will make the switch. The choice to support it belongs in consumers' hands. I think the, just the regular oil is, is, is going to be a thing, it's got to be a thing of past in the very near future. As they exercise the choice to use the E85, they are keeping dollars that stay in our economy instead of going overseas to the Middle East. Now there are car converter